Grace Kids, I'm JD. And I'm Sean. Welcome back to another week of our Superhero Summer, where we have been learning all about how superheroes fight with conviction. You know, if I was a comic book superhero, I would be the Flash, Light. Imagine being lost in the woods at night, the moonlight being hidden by a thick canopy of trees, you hear a rustle nearby, is it a harmless bunny rabbit or the predatory creep of a hungry mountain lion? You want to run? Scream help? Never fear! Flashlight is here! The warm glow of my super light will shine your way to freedom! No need to thank me, it's all in a day's work of a superhero. I serve the public and stand up for what's right. I know what you all are thinking. What good is a superhero with a flashlight when most people have a flashlight on their phones nowadays? Maybe we need to rethink this superhero. In today's story, you're going to hear about three guys who didn't have flashlights or cell phones but their light shines so bright, people are still talking about it. But I think you guys are ready for a game. This game is called Real or Fake, Wacky Superhero Edition. We are gonna give you the name and the description of a superhero, and you have to tell us whether you think the superhero is real or fake. Round one. Squirrel Girl. She possesses enhanced strength, speed, agility, and reflexes. Her squirrel-like superpowers allow her to climb trees, jump 30 feet, and even communicate with squirrels. This is real. Round two. Professor Puddle, a former scientist who was transformed into goo during an experiment gone wrong. Now they use their newfound abilities to fight crime by shape-shifting into various liquid forms such as water, slime, or even mercury. This is fake. Round three, Doorman. He has the ability to teleport people or objects through solid matter with his own body that serves as a portal of sorts. This is real. Round four, the Elastic Toaster. She can stretch her body into incredible lengths morphing into various shapes and sizes at will. Her mission is to combat breakfast-related crimes armed with a keen sense of toast-related puns. This is fake. Round five, our final round, the Calendar Man is fascinated by dates and calendars. He is known for committing themed crimes that correspond with holidays and significant dates. This is real. Now we're gonna learn about three friends who God basically gave the superpower of fire resistance. And now for an amazing true story from the book of Daniel, chapter three. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been appointed to high positions. They advised the king and helped him to rule Babylon and the areas that surrounded it. But even though King Nebuchadnezzar was impressed by the one true God that they worshipped, he still believed in false gods, even ones that he created. Make me a statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and cover it in pure gold. When the statue was completed, the king ordered it to be set up on the broad, flat plains of Dura. Call all my advisors and officials to come stand before the statue. Soon, all the king's officials and wise men stood before this towering statue. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood among them. Uh, I, I don't like this. It's kind of like the statue from the king's dream. Uh, uh, things could get rocky. The king's messenger called out to all the gathered officials and advisors. Listen, you people from every nation. Here is what the king commands. When you hear the sound of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the king's statue. Uh-oh. If you don't, you'll be thrown into the blazing furnace. Double uh-oh. Strike up the band. Triple uh-oh. Every official and advisor fell flat on their face, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood tall, and some of the other wise men noticed. Ah, it's those upstart Israelites who got promoted over us. Yeah, well, they're about to get promoted somewhere hotter. <laughs> the advisors went straight to the king. King Neb, may you live forever. You commanded everyone to worship the statue when they hear the sounds of the... Flutes, lyres, horns, lyres, scythers, flute, uh, you know, all, all kinds of music. 
But those Israelites don't serve your gods, and they refuse to worship your statue. So we think they're in hot water, if you get me. <laughs> the king burned with anger. He immediately sent for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Don't you serve my gods and worship the statue I set up? When you hear the sounds of... Uh, uh, when you hear the music, fall down and worship the statue. If you don't, you'll be thrown into a blazing furnace. <laughs> and then what god can save you? You can throw us in the fire, but the one true god is able to bring us out alive. Even if we knew he wouldn't save us, we still wouldn't serve your gods or worship your statue. You do realize it's just a big pile of smelted gold, right? Oh, you... Guards! Make the fire seven times hotter. Tie up these men and throw them into the furnace. Immediately, the soldiers grabbed the three friends and tied them up with thick rope, and then they threw them straight into the heart of the fire. And the king gripped the arms of his chair, still enraged. That'll teach him who's in charge. <laughs> But just as quickly, he leapt from his seat and hurried as close to the scorching flames as he dared. Wait, didn't we tie up three men? Didn't we throw three men into the fire? You sure did. Ooh, a little toasty in there. <laughs> well, look, I see four men walking around in the fire. They are tied up, and the fire hasn't even harmed them. The fourth man, he looks like son of the gods. Four men? Uh, walking around? <laughs> A good joke, King Neb. <laughs> the king wasn't joking. He approached the mouth of the furnace and called out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out! You who serve the Most High God, come here. The three friends climbed out of the furnace completely unharmed. Their hair didn't burn, or their clothes. <laughs> They don't even smell like they've been hanging out at a bonfire. Hmm. The king threw out his arms to welcome the men that he had so recently condemned to die. May the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be praised. He has sent his angel and saved his servants. They trusted in him and refused to obey my command. They would rather die than serve or worship any god except their own. No other god can save in this way. The king turned to glare at his other advisors. I'm giving an order. No one from any nation can say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or they'll be diced up into little pieces. <laughs> Instead of bowing down, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had chosen to stand for what was right and King Nebuchadnezzar was so amazed by the power of the one true God that he appointed them to even higher positions in the kingdom of Babylon. Maybe a flashlight isn't that great of a superpower, but we can shine a light that is pretty powerful. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and let your light shine in front of others so that they will see the good things you do and they will praise God for it. When we do good, when we stand for what's right, when we help people who are lost or hurting, when we love others, anytime we choose to be a hero, it's like we are shining a light, a light that points people to God and shows them how a good, loving, wonderful God he is. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shine their light by standing up to the king, and God was able to show power through them. I think this is the whole reason to have conviction, the whole reason we stand up for what's right. It's not so we can say, look how amazing and strong I am. It's so that we can light the way even more to our amazing and strong God. The one thing to remember today is when you stand up for what's right, others can see God. That's today's bottom line. Will you say that with me? When, when you stand, stand up for what's right, others can see God. God. One more time. When you stand up for what's right, others can see God. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for the story of Daniel standing for what is right. It can be really difficult to do the right thing, especially when there's a chance it could cost us. Thank you for giving us your word to live by, and we ask that you give us the courage to live it out every day. Amen. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching.